Hello, everyone. How are you? How's everyone doing today? I'm on my laptop today, which means I'm not able to see the comments that come up, but please leave them anyway, because I'll come back on and I will check in with you and I will follow up and I will respond and I will connect. So if you hop on now or on the replay, go ahead and just drop a message below. Let me know you're here. Let me know how you're doing, what it's like, where you're living. Love connecting with each of you. So today I wanted to hop on, and it's Friday, right? So at least here it's Friday. Um, and Fridays for some folks can feel exciting because they feel like they can take a breath of fresh air because the weekend's coming. But for others that have different schedules, it's not that way. So let me know how your Friday is today what your expectations are, what intentions you've set for today, how your experience has been this Friday so far. So far it's been a good Friday. Hey Tracy, thanks for joining me. How are you doing? Let me know how you're doing. I'm glad you're here. So far my Friday's been pretty good. Meeting at the school for my kiddos, checking in with them, spend some time with my two-year-old, getting a little work done. So balanced Friday, just the way I like it. How about you? Are you having a balanced Friday so far? I wanted to talk to you all today about stressful living. Now, of course, this group, the purpose of this group is to pull in people that want to live balanced and joyful, right? Like who doesn't want that, of course. However, so many people are living super, super stressed out. We know for a fact research is supporting our stress levels are amping up like in like crazy across all generations. So it's not like, oh, only in this one age group. Yes, some age groups are amping up more than others, but all age groups, they're all increasing in their stress levels, all of them. So we are freaking stressed out nation, and this is global too. Burnout is a public health crisis. I mean, there's just so much stress happening. Why? Why are we so often silently saying to ourselves, Ugh, why can't I ever catch a break? This is so stressful. Why is there always so much to do? Why is it so overwhelming? Crap, what if I mess this up? I have to get this right. Is there something wrong with me? Why? Why are we always stressed out? Why are we always putting pressure on ourselves? Listen, there's, there is healthy stress. There absolutely is. There's no such thing as living a life with no stressors. The, the trick, right, the balanced and joyful living piece is that stress happens in life and it doesn't completely rock your world and throw you off your feet. You feel equipped to manage that stress. It does not change who you are or how you show up. You don't wind up behaving in a way that leaves you feeling, yes, leaves you feeling like you're regretting everything you've done or said or you're worrying about everything you're going to do or everything you're going to say, right? That's not balanced and joyful living. I've shared with you guys throughout this week that there have been so many things that have been happening in my house with the sewage backing up, with my kids <laughs> peeing in my bed, <laughs> pee accidents in my bed. And since the sewage is backing up, I can't use a lot of water, which means I have to be very careful about what laundry I'm doing and when I'm doing it, because if I use too much water, the sewage is gonna back up more. Like I could, I could riddle down a list of stressors for you about this week, and I can also tell you I don't feel stressed out. Why? Because I have a core foundation of how to experience my life and show up and manage stress in a way that for me is balanced and joyful. But my balanced and joyful life is not gonna be the same as yours. And that's how people get twisted. Because when you have these thoughts in your head, and please let me know what thoughts are your, that come up for you in your head, like what your stressful thoughts are. It might be some of the ones I mentioned, and it might be other ones. Of course there's gonna be other ones because we have anywhere from 50, thousand to eighty thousand thoughts racing through our minds every single day and my oh my do these thoughts know how to influence how we experience our life because that's what thoughts do they ex they influence how we feel and how we experience our life our perspective the the glasses that we're viewing our world through right so all of these thoughts that are racing through our minds they influence how we interact with our friends how we are or are not intimate with our partner, how we perceive our boss and therefore how we judge our boss, how we treat our colleagues or just strangers, passers-by on the road. Our thoughts in our head impact how we interact with all of those people, how we view all of those people. 
And therefore, it, it, it it's, it's going to impact how we feel and our stress levels. And that's why we need to be so aware, so aware of the thoughts we're willing to fight with or feed, give attention to, whatever words you want to use, right? We have to be so aware of the thoughts that are coming up and fueling us, the thoughts we're allowing to impact us, because more than anything else, your thoughts impact you the most. Yes, they impact your relationships. Yes, they impact how you perform at work. Yes, like they impact all of those things, but the most they impact you. That's why they impact those other things, because they impact you so much. Yeah, does that make sense? Can you connect with this? Like, have you noticed when you have a day when it feels really rough, your thoughts are not super hot, like they're kind of yucky, icky, negative, and then you feel yucky, icky, negative? It impacts your sense of worth, your self-worth, your ability, your belief in your ability to be successful. These thoughts impact whether you view yourself as failing or succeeding, whether you are willing to view your strengths or your weaknesses. They directly impact how you feel. And when there are thousands of thousands of thoughts passing through your mind, like the ones opening that I just said, it is really hard not to feel stressed and worried, isn't it? Can you relate to that? Those days when you're like, uh, do I have to do today? Or like hashtag adulting, right? Like a thing, right? So oftentimes, people feel really out of control of their thoughts. And that makes sense, right? Because we have so many of them. And with the more recent mindfulness movement that's been going on, there's a lot of talk about controlling our thoughts. And I have a lot of caution around that. This The twist with the logic of controlling your thoughts to feel better is that trying to control all of those thousands of thoughts, it will absolutely, without a doubt, create a tug of war in your mind and it's going to lead you to feel worse, right? Because you're fighting internally. And this, and I see this happen all the time. And it's well-intentioned because it's like, oh, I'm trying to be mindful. I'm trying to be aware of my thoughts. So I'm just going to control them. Oh, I noticed a thought. I, all right, I got to force down the mind. No, like that force that internal force, that internal fight, it creates this tug of war that actually amps up the stress. It increases anxiety levels. I love mindfulness. I practice it daily, but there's a warped understanding of mindfulness kind of in the modern day because mindfulness isn't about controlling your thoughts. Mindfulness is about acceptance and intentional focus of attention. Intentional focus of attention. Too many people, I see it all the time, get wrapped up in trying to control their thoughts and then they just wind up coming to me extra resentful, extra stressed out, extra anxious. Let me know how that's come up for you. Have you ever been really aware of your thoughts and then gotten really pissed off that you can't control them and then felt worse? Probably right? And there's no shame here. There's no judgment here. I've, d I've done that too when I was going throughout my journey of trying to figure out how mindfulness fits in my life and how I can use it to my advantage and how I can nurture my thoughts in a way that serves me. This is a, a normal part of the journey, but you can't stay there because it doesn't serve you. It doesn't help you. It makes you feel worse, right? And then you get just more pissed off and more resentful and more worried and more stressed, just more of all the stuff that you are trying to not have to deal with so much. Yeah. So I want you to just consider if you've noticed this. Just be super aware but gently aware of whether this has come up for you. Have you noticed this at all? Notice this happening for you at all in your life? I would love to hear. Even if you catch the replay, let me know. Let me know. And give me some hearts or give me some thumbs up. Let me know that this resonates with me with you. I'm going to go out on a limb and say most, if not all of you, have or are experiencing what I'm talking about right now. I'm going to be perfectly honest because we're raised in a society where these outcomes, tangible external outcomes, are cherished more than the journey, the journey to getting there, the journey through life, where impossible perfection is strived for at the expense of 
perseverance being rewarded. We live in a society where standardization is used as a measurement for inappropriate standards, standards that don't fit all, and where immediate gratification is just nullified. It's just nullified patience. It's just made patience like not even a thing because immediate gratification, right away, right away, right, right. You don't have to wait, go, go, go. Here you go, go, like, right? Like, it's just immediate. And then people forget how to be patient. It's not intentional. My patience has shifted as I've used technology more and I have to become aware of that, not beat myself up once I become aware of that. And then I have to intentionally revert to patience. I have to be intentional about it. Most people do because we're so used to the immediate gratification. And when you don't get it, you get stressed. Yeah, hey Christine, thanks for joining us. Let me know how you're doing. We live in a society where these facades of ourselves are plastered all over for the world to see on social media. I know you, I know you know what I mean because we're on social media right now. While our avatar selves, like our non-avatar selves, or while our computer selves are interacting, showing up the way we want them to show up, the human part of us behind the screen is feeling more anxious, more stressed, more overwhelmed, more disconnected, and lonelier. Truth, right? It's just the truth. So don't get me wrong. There are some beautiful, wonderful, awesome parts of social media, like right now. Getting to connect with you, and I may have never otherwise met you. We may have nev never otherwise crossed paths. The words that I may say in this live or a different live or something I might post might connect with you in such a significant way that you carry it through into your life in a way of significance for you, and that never would have happened without social media, right? So there are some great parts of social media. This isn't like a social media like rag session, right? Even in just building my coaching business, I've met people in amazing parts of other countries, and they're awesome. I would not have been able to do that if it wasn't for social media. So there are some awesome parts, right? But I can tell you this with honesty, even those people that I've met in other countries, as fabulous as they are, they are also struggling with maintaining themselves, their emotional self, their mental health offline, their holistic wellness offline, and feeling more stressed offline, and fearing more failure offline, all while still interacting online and presenting a different facade. We're all more stressed. We're all more worried. We're all more overwhelmed. We're all more burnt out. We are. That is the society that we live in right now. And this isn't like a Debbie Downer conversation. It really isn't. But it is an honest one. And I, and I think it's really important to bring this up to the forefront because there are so many people, and I can guarantee you some of you or some of them, and I know I was too, that were burnout, overwhelmed, anxious, stressed out in silence, suffering in silence, thinking that they just had to grin and bear it and tolerate all of this because this is just how it is, right? But it's, it doesn't need to be that way. It does not need to be that way. And you can't really tend to it or work through it or change it if you're not willing to call it out. And that's why we're having this upfront, honest conversation about it. This is happening. You are not alone. A lot of people are experiencing it. And what's really interesting and also super startling is that approximately 85% of what we spend our time and energy worrying about doesn't even actually come to fruition. It doesn't even actually happen. 85% of what we worry about doesn't actually happen. Let that sink in a minute. What? Where'd you get that number from, Tony? There was a study done. Isn't that? Consider the time and the effort and the energy that you have spent worrying just today. Just this week, consider the amount of money that you've spent to numb or avoid focusing on that worry, to try to suppress it or ignore it with, with food or drinks or other distractions, et cetera, et cetera, only to have those worries, those stressors come back compounded, feeling even heavier on your chest or your shoulders or your mind. 
And then what happens when all those worries get compounded? Tell me what your experience is or maybe what you've seen other people experience when the stress isn't managed in a way that's healthy or effective and then it gets compounded. More self-doubt. Inner critic amping up like crazy. Frustratingly crazy. Resentment. Especially people that you love, which makes it really hard. Procrastination. More feelings of disconnect. Opportunities, when you're in that place, opportunities for joy and meaningful connection and feel-good moments get missed because we can get so preoccupied with being stuck in our heads with the worry, 85% of which is unlikely to happen, rather than living in our lives. Mm, This is so, so powerful to me. Let me know where it connects with you, if it connects with you, if this makes sense to you, if you have questions about any of this. It's it's if you think about it, if you let it rest for a moment, it's this is important information to be aware of, don't you think? And a lot of people don't realize because they feel so isolated in their stress and feel so much internal pressure that they have to just suck it up and deal with it all on their own, or like the world is against them, or like it's only them. It just is a lonely, disconnected space to be in. And this conversation is important because I want you to know you're not alone. And you don't need to stay there. You do not need to stay there. But I can tell you this. It has been my experience, and what I know to be true, is that the more deeply caring and ambitious you are, which is what all of you are in this group, I believe it without a doubt, the more likely you are to struggle with this, to struggle with that pressure of needing to do so much all the time for others, needing to show up and needing to bear the weight of the pressure of the burdens of the responsibilities of the roles of everything on your shoulders without asking for help. Because all too often we convince ourselves that if we just check off the check boxes, right? Like what, whatever conventional wisdom says, like do this and then this and then this and then this and then this, check them off, check them off, check them off. You'll be happy. You'll be successful once you check all of those off, right? that we're, we can get stuck in that mindset and, and believe that if we just keep checking all these boxes off and giving and giving and giving in order to, to show up and, and to appear as this non-selfish, as this successful, as this competent, strong person that you really pride yourself on showing up and appearing as, you get exhausted and depleted and more stressed. Yes, I've done it myself. This is a cycle. Almost every person I talk to that's coming to me for support, this is their like this is a cycle. Some semblance of this cycle is what's happening. There's this belief that if we achieve all these shoulds, check off all those check boxes and do everything as perfectly as possible and just working our butts off no matter what, that then this stress is going to eventually go away, right? Like, no, 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 just let me get this done and then I'll feel better. Or no, 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 let me like finish this and then it'll be different. Or no, 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 let me, right? The need to achieve is going to dissipate one magical day. We'll be successful and happy and we'll stop having to work so hard all the time. Just give me some time to just check off these checkboxes and get everything done. This doesn't, it doesn't work. It sucks you in. It sucks you in. Have you been sucked in? I was sucked in for a lot of time. I was sucked in for a very long time. I burn out. I was got overwhelmed. I definitely managed anxiety. I had panic attacks. I was losing chunks of my hair. Like it's, it can suck you in very easily. It sucks so many people in because focusing on the checking off of all those boxes, trying to present perfectly. Hey, Sarah, thanks for joining us. Let me know how you're doing. Trying to present yourself perfectly or just constantly giving and hustling and doing, it puts you just like it put me and countless others in a position to continuously stress. There's always something more to do. Always. Have you ever not had something more to do? Have you ever finished a list and it just never, ever have anything added back onto it? Like you, have you completed the list? Have you hustled and now your lists are all complete and you have nothing else to do? No, because it's just not how life works. It's not. 
That constant stress, it keeps people worrying about that 85% of the stuff that never actually happens in our lives. The overwhelm turns into overjudge, and people miss this a lot of the time. Overwhelm turns into overjudgment, overjudging yourself, feeling overjudged by others, and then overjudging others, and then feeling this really crappy, icky sense of like, all this overjudging that's going on because you don't want to be a judgmental person and you don't consider yourself to be a judgmental person. And then you catch yourself acting judgy and then you're pissed off or resentful or upset or feeling ashamed or guilty or whatever there's the feeling that comes up for you that doesn't feel good because now you feel like you're judgy or you're being judged. Yes? Been there? Yes? It's a crappy place to be. But it happens. It happens. It happens to so many. You are not alone in that. But it perpetuates this cycle of continued worry and shame and resentment that we want to get out of because it doesn't feel good and it doesn't work for us and it's not healthy, right? As uncomfortable as it is to live in this high pressure, constant worry environment, there's actually fear about not living there too. So there's fear about getting out of it. So it can feel like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Like, okay, I don't want to live here, but uh, how do I get here? Do I want to get here? What's going to happen if I get there? What about the process of getting there. What if I fail at the process of getting there? What if I'm rejected because I'm over here and everyone I know is over here and then they think I'm different or they think I'm snobby or they think I think I'm better than them. And woo, 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 the worry, the fear, the doubt. It can become overwhelming. These fears keep people paralyzed. Even the fear of not living in the fear keeps people paralyzed. When the truth is that they're spending more time and effort and money trying to silence or avoid that worry, that stress, that overwhelm, than the amount of time and effort and money that it would actually cost to legitimately address the chronic stress and underlying what's, what's happening underlying it that's going on and move out of it. And I totally used to be in that boat. Are, you, are any of you there or do you know anyone that's there? No shame, no judgment here. We are all here because we all want to experience a more balanced and joyful life. That is what I help people do. That is why you are here. Everyone deserves that, right? Does everyone want that? But people don't always get what they deserve. That's not how life works. Life isn't fair. So I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole, okay? I'll tell you what. I, I was... a. Uh, I found myself buying comfort food, for example, to try to ignore the icky feelings. I would buy comfort food, coffee, go to the movies. I would do things to try to avoid experiencing or dealing with like the icky feelings. And how much money did I spend doing that? I don't even know. How much time did I spend doing that? I don't even know. And guess what? Because I was in an icky mood, not all of it even felt good. Like it's cool if you're doing something to care for yourself and it feels good and it's moving you forward. But when you're just trying to avoid the crap, and you don't even feel good while you're doing the avoidance because everything is just compounded and built up. That's not helping you. That's not serving you. That's not helping you move forward. I was totally there. And I don't even know how much money I spent in that space. But I can tell you I invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in more credentials, in my degrees, in my professional development over the course of many years, of course, um, in order to ease of feelings, internal feelings that I hadn't addressed initially um, about not feeling good enough, about imposter syndrome, feeling like I had something to prove. Those kind of thoughts and feelings, they lingered. And I didn't realize that they were there. I didn't realize they were in the depths of underneath of all that. I didn't realize I was spending all this money and time and effort and energy to prove my worth because inherently I didn't believe I was worthy. I had to do that inner work to figure that out. And I will tell you, it's a life changer, an insane life changer in such a good way. It's freeing. It's liberating. Have you experienced that? I would totally love to hear if you've experienced that. Please let me know. Please let me know. I love to hear about people's amazing shifts. But I say all this while also saying I do not regret my decisions in life because I've just learned so much from every single experience that I've had, every mistake, every failure, every mishap, I have chosen to learn from them. And it has allowed me to be a better mom. It has allowed me to be a better therapist, a better coach. 
It is what allows me to show up as authentically as, as who I am in doing what I love to do and therefore helping people to do the same because I've had that journey, I've experienced that journey, and people can feel that when we work together, that level of authenticity. And had I not been willing to learn from my experiences or had I not had those experiences, I do not believe I would have that same level of deep connection and ability to help people shift in the way that I do now. I don't believe that, so I'm grateful. I'm grateful for my journey. Are there parts of your journey that even though they were hard when you were in it, that you can look back and say that you're grateful for? Because the reality is that buying into the conventional shoulds of success, despite not feeling aligned with them, like I, did, I could feel this internal ickiness, but I didn't know what it was or what to do with it, right? So I just kept going and checking the checkboxes off. And many of you probably have experienced something similar. Like there's just this kind of disconnect, but you're just doing because you feel like you're like you should do it and eventually you'll get done and, and then it'll be better. It impacted my life pervasively and it's impacting yours too. And the question is, are you cool with how it's impacting it? Because if you are, awesome. If you're not, are you willing to change anything? Totally your choice. Totally your choice. But I can tell you my worries grow. And things got worse before they got better. And I had to admit that I needed some support. And once I did that, I could release the shame around that because I love what I do and I help people. So how can I shame beat myself up about accepting help when what I do is help people? And I don't think anything bad about the people I help. Actually, I think they're incredibly courageous and amazing human beings. And I'm so grateful and humbled and privileged that I get to support them. That's what I think. And so I have no doubt that if I'm willing to trust this person and I trust myself to trust this person that's supporting me, whether it's a coach or a therapist, I've, I've done both, then it's because it's their gift to be able to support me too. And they feel honored to do that because they are authentic in their living as well. Yeah? What do you think? Have you been willing, been open to extend yourself to someone else to reach out for support so that you can shift your life experience and not stay in the super stressed out space and create more joy? Let me know. Let me know. Because I help others support that. I help to support others do that too. And the shifts, when you see them and witness, it's just magical. It seems magical. It's not really magic, of course. But it does seem magical. And it's that time of year, so maybe I just have magic on my mind, the magic in the air with the holiday season. But I do want to hear from you. What comes up with you around this? Does this make sense? Does it fit? Have you had any experiences that connect with what I've shared? Because here's what I teach. Here's, here's the awesome stuff. The opposite of conventional wisdom is what's going to get you to where you want to go. It's that simple. Now, listen, simple and easy are not the same. I'm not saying this is an easy journey. It's not, but it's very doable, and it's actually exciting. It really is, and you would probably grow and learn, discover new things about yourself that you didn't realize. I can almost guarantee you that. So what would be the opposite of conventional wisdom? What would be the opposite of trying to gauge all of the levels of success and doing it right, all of those places where your worry is coming from of needing to get everything done and do everything right, checking all of those checkboxes off, focusing on that and allowing that to fuel your stress and determine your worth? What's the opposite of that? I'm glad you asked. The opposite of that is, is really fairly simple and to the point. It's just that the journey to getting there isn't easy. I'm not gonna tell you it's hard. It's unique to you. So your journey is gonna look very different to someone else's. But here's kind of the nuts and nuts and bolts of it, okay? Rather than figure out how to blend in, how to conform or fit into some predefined category to be liked or accepted or not be judged in a harsh way. Instead of doing that, 
which would be more of a con conventional means, a more of a conventional checkbox to focus on. Instead of doing that, do the opposite. Explore, figure out who you authentically are and show up as that authentic self regardless. Regardless, no matter what. And instead of striving for perfection, which is what conventional wisdom would have us believe we need to do, do the opposite. Embrace failure. Welcome it as a chance to grow and learn and discover, to progress. No successful, truly successful person. And when I say truly successful, I'm talking about when you look at someone externally that has kind of they've they've got the the job they enjoy and they're happy okay they didn't get there through one step or through perfection they got there by finding out who they are and failing a lot of times on the way to get to where they're going most quote unquote successful people out there that we would see in like a magazine or whatnot have failed at least 13 to 15 times for each success. Welcome the failure. Separate it from your identity. Failure isn't your identity. Welcome failure, welcome mistakes, welcome mishaps, and allow them to be opportunities for you to learn and grow and discover something new. And the last one. Conventional wisdom would have us believe that we need to wear this mask. This mask that makes sure as much as possible that we don't let other people see whenever we fail, or that we're imperfect in any way, AKA they can't really see our true self. It prevents vulnerability, which then prevents and stifles connection. And so do the opposite. Be visible doing everything I just said. Be visible in your failures. Be visible in your welcoming and your learning from your failures. Be visible in showing up authentically you. Allow other people to see that without it meaning anything about your worth. And give that a try and let me know how it goes. Let me know what that experience is like for you. The key to making these shifts, to doing the opposite of what conventional wisdom would have us believe or have us do, a lot of people are raised with this perspective to check these checkbox and to try to be perfect and to never failure because failure is bad, right? This Do the opposite. In order to do that, some of you, many of you, all of you are going to benefit from support. And when I say support, it could be a friend that you trust. It could be a family member. And if that's not the case, if this goes deeper, which for many people it does, Deal with an expert who cares. Deal with an expert who knows what they're doing. Deal with an expert that has experience having gone through a similar experience in their own life. The key is to practice what brings you joy rather than what enhances your stress. And that typically is the opposite of what we are conventionally thought to believe in. Does that make sense? Let me know. Let me know what you think. I want to answer your questions. If anything I'm saying doesn't make sense. And here's another important piece. When you make this shift, when you try to flip it on its head and do the opposite, do so without beating yourself up when you recognize that you want to kind of creep back into your old habits. Okay? Don't beat yourself up. It's not going to help you. It's not going to move you forward. And I know that this isn't all super easy to do. I know personally and professionally, I know that this is not easy to do. Even though it sounds maybe simple on the outside, it's not easy to do. Cool, that's fine. This is a journey. Embrace the journey because this is very possible. Shifting out of the stressful living into the balanced and joyful living is very possible. And it's necessary. If you really want to enjoy your life more, you have to make these shifts. It's just necessary. Get out of the, the constant shame and doubt and resentment and worry and stress. You have to make these shifts can't do it without doing the shifts. 
So instead of trying to figure out who you should be, explore and claim your authentic self. And if you're not sure what the heck I mean by that or who the heck your authentic self is, hey, I can help you, let me know. We can work on it together. We can get on the phone together. We can have a free call together. We can discuss working together. And I will make you the recommendation about what supports are gonna be the most effective for you, whether it's with me or someone else. Because you absolutely can be aware of conditions that you don't like and experience your emotions, even if they're emotions that don't feel good, without obsessing over them or being enveloped by them. You've just likely developed habits just like everyone else that support an enhanced stress lifestyle. That is the culture within which we've been raised. It's okay. Don't beat yourself up for it. Just recognize it and decide to do something different. It just means that you need to create different habits. And so if you've tried to make these shifts or you've tried to make different habits on your own and it didn't work or it didn't last, that just means you're going to benefit from an expert to guide you, quality support that compassionately cares, genuinely will show up to guide you to shift from this current lifestyle and these current habits that aren't serving you to new ones that will create a more joyful and balanced experience for you. So if you are living in chronic stress, constant overwhelm, always worrying, always beating yourself up, engaging in self-doubt, therapy, wellness coaching. These things will support you. Go out, ask, what's it gonna hurt? You figure out if the person that you connect with is a good connection for you, and if they're not, you try someone else, right? But this is for your wellness, and that means this is for how you experience your life and how you experience your relationships. And isn't that like the bulk of our living, it's so beautiful. It is so beautiful to me. So if I can support you, if you have connected with what I said and you would like me to connect with you so that we could discuss working together, I'm more than happy to do so. I will leave the link below and you can go ahead and click on that scheduling link. We can have a completely free call to discuss working together. And if I can help, I will. And if I can't, I will absolutely send you elsewhere to have a different resource or reference for support. I'm not gonna leave you high and dry. Okay? I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Bye. See you later.